Hi, this is Marcus Giuliano from HealthyChefDude.com and HealthyChefDude.blogspot.com, which is where you're probably watching this video unless you've got it on my YouTube channel. So I want to talk today about halibut. I had a great post the other day about Chilean sea bass. People loved it, loved the post, great information. I got a lot of comments from it. So today's halibut. It's still during Lent right now. You have East Coast halibut, West Coast halibut. The good halibut, the bad halibut, basically. East Coast halibut you want to avoid. When you go into a restaurant, you see a lot of menus just say halibut, halibut filet or whatever. You want to ask, and the chef should really know where the halibut's coming from. Halibut's not an, an inexpensive fish. It tends to be more on the expensive side. Most nicer restaurants are going to serve halibut. Halibut's not a cheaper, inexpensive fish that you're going to get for like fish and chips at a pub or something because of what it costs to begin with. What it's, makes it cost so much? It, you know, Why is it an expensive fish? It's, it's a prized fish. And the, on the West Coast, it's not in season that much or as much as it used to be. There's strict quotas on it. The East Coast, there's not that much of it around, and they just fish it basically all year long. And as they catch it, they'll just keep fishing out there. Now, there are quotas out there on the, on the East Coast, but the damage has been done already. On the East Coast? On the East Coast. The stocks have really, really dwindled down, um, and you can really see it out there available most of the year long from, from the vendors and at the restaurants. But the stock the stock is, is just not, the population is not that strong. The East Coast, a lot of the species on the East Coast are just overfished. On the West Coast, however, they monitor things a little carefully, especially when you get to Alaska. Alaska, I would so say... So you want to eat West Coast West halibut. Coast, Alaskan specifically. Canadians, okay. I like Alaska for the gold seal of fish. In their constitution, it has preservation. They preserve all their natural resources, and their fish There is a huge natural resource for Alaska. So if you're out at a restaurant, and you know nothing about fish, you want to revert to fish for dummies. Order Alaskan. That's really... A, a much safer way. Now, are there some species because they take good care because of, they take good care because they, they and they care about the environment. The environment. And they're really the much. They're ahead of everybody else. They're, they're very ahead of progressively of sustainability. So, East Coast halibut avoid. If you go to a restaurant and you ask, they should know. The chef should really know where the fish, the food is coming from, especially fish. It's very important. People are are, are eco friendly sensitive now. Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch is a huge huge respected organization that, that, that does some phenomenal work out there. It's on the iPhone as far as an app. Um, people understand the pocket guides. We've given them out for years at my restaurant. So people understand this. So if you're going to a restaurant, the chef should really know. Ask. And if you're a chef that's listening, find out. When you can, when you can advertise to your clientele where something's from, it just goes it goes a little further. It's, it's, a, it's a better safety net. It's a better showing that we're taking pride, myself being a chef, we're taking pride of where our stuff comes from. We're doing some research. We're just not buying, you know, a quoted thing out there that happens to be the cheapest thing out there. Because the vendors that, that have just like the basic halibut, basic sole, it's just, it comes from the auction. Nobody knows where it comes from. It just lands in Gloucester, Boston. It comes to the Fulton Fish Market. It comes to these markets and it's just caught out there and it goes to an auction. It's not, there's not a direct relationship between the catcher who's actually catching it and the end user, you know, the, the, it's really a lost connection. So switching hands, nobody really knows. And how can you tell where it comes from? You honestly can't. There's no tracking system for this kind of stuff. So on to the West Coast. Alaska's the best choice. Well, uh, how about runs from Alaska all the way down to California? Now the catch methods are different. The reason why I say stay away from California or, or you know the lower states as opposed to Alaska, Alaska has a much better system of catching there. They use long line catching, which is the long lines sit on the bottom of the ocean floor. Flou uh, halibut is a basically a large flounder. I was gonna, you almost heard me say flounder there for a second. It's, a lar it's the largest flatfish. And these fish can get sometimes huge, big, big, big uh, uh, halibuts. They have a long line system where the hooks drop all on the bottom of, of the ocean and the, the hooks go out there. And you heard long lines are not good for certain fish, but for halibut it's okay. The hooks sit down there, the fish go grab it and eat, and then all of a sudden you got them. The, the bycatches, where they're, which means, what I mean by bycatch, the fish that they're accidentally catching, that they're not meant to catch, are at a bare minimum on the halibuts like this. In California, they, they, they do other kinds of netting and stuff, and they'll do netting as, as they go up into Canada as well. And I'm, I'm, they might even net in, a, in Alaska, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, a, I'm sort of against most net fish. Or I'm sorry, gill netted fish to be specific, because there are some netting where they actually can target uh, schools of fish and get in there and get the salmon runs and net them and, and we'll do it properly. But gill netting is a way where they catch halibut. I like to avoid all gill net caught fish. Gill nets, if you can picture holes in a net and of a certain size, the smaller fish swim right through these holes, right? The bigger fish can't really penetrate, but the certain size fish can get in, work their head in. 
but can't get the rest of their body in, now go to pull back out of the net and guess what happens? It hooks on their gills and the fish can't get out. So it's caught in, it's called a gill net. And that fish will sit there and maybe struggle for hours before that net is actually hoisted up out of the water. So it's a gill net and that's when the fish tends to get, tends to get beat up. Now if you go to a grocery store, to a good fish market, and you see wild Alaskan salmon, and the fish is there, and if the head is off, chances are that fish was gill netted because the fish got beat up, the gills got beat up, and it's not something that's presentable. If you see that salmon, that fish share, a uh, halibut, and you see that with its head on, head on, Alaskan salmon, king salmon, they caught it with a hook and line. It was a painless catch. The fish came out of the water. The fish wasn't bruised. It wasn't beat up. They want to show it off. That's the surefire way of cat of, of knowing. So avoid if you're going, you know, into um, into a fish and you see with without the head, you know, you know that it's gill netted because they don't want to show the head off. Now, sure, it's cheaper not to send the heads and things like that, but the general rule, that's the general rule. So halibut can get gill netted, and they'll catch other fish in there, and they'll have you know have bycatch issues. But with Alaska, the quota is so down to a science. You know, in lower states, there's not quite of a quota system. Now, West Coast halibut are Alaskan halibut. The season opens in March, goes until November, and uh, quotas are strict in there. So you might see some fish out of season. It might be frozen at sea or frozen on shore if you see something in January. So if you go to a restaurant in January and you see fresh Alaskan halibut on the menu, say the chef isn't fresh, and he says, oh, yes, it's fresh, it's not really, in a sense, fresh. It's still fresh, but it's been frozen. Now, I'm not against freezing fish. Freezing fish is a huge technological advancement if it's done the proper way, cryogenically. Now, there's a guy out there called Bruce Gore, um, longtime fisherman, very sustainable, from Alaska. He goes out there, he catches what he has, what, what he has, what he has orders sold for. All of his fish are. He freezes everything, by the way. None, none of his fish goes out unfrozen. It's all frozen. He goes out there. He catches salmon or halibut. The fish get landed on the dot on the on the boat. They get massaged, back bled, and flash frozen within 90 minutes of catching the fish. The fish hasn't hit rigor mortis yet. So what happens is now this fish is super fresh, super frozen, and it gets shipped to its destination. So it's fresher than fresh. fresh. Let's say we take fresh fish. What's the opposite of fresh? The opposite of fresh is rotten. Okay, that's the opposite of fresh. So is frozen fish rotten? No. No, frozen fish is not rotten. So fresh and frozen are not opposite. Frozen can actually be fresher than fresh because there's no microbial count. They've had no time for any of these pathogens to grow. It's the fish out of the water, cryogenically frozen, perfectly packaged, glazed, and sent to its destination, eaten three weeks later, three months later. Beautiful, beautiful process. All Chilean sea bass is frozen because of where it's caught. And it's called refresh where they thaw it out. So Chilean sea bass is not a fresh caught fish. It's shipped up. <coughs> these boats go out for, you know, for a couple weeks, a month or so. Who knows how long they actually can stay out there. Back to halibut. So if you find a good halibut that's frozen at sea, you'll find them in the health food stores. Uh, same thing with an Alaskan salmon. Those are perfectly fine. And I like those. I endorse those. I use those when the, when the fresh is not in season or even when the fresh is in season because it is fresher than fresh. So back to the halibut. You go to Alaska. You look for their halibut. You really um, want to want to enjoy this fish when it's in season. Halibut's such a beautiful white, flaky fish. Really a nice, delicate flavor. Just a prized fish. It's one of the fish that the doctors and the, or the nutritionists say get it for its omega. You know, it has a lot of valuable property in it. Um, cold water um, fish. So halibut is really an important part of the diet, according to to a lot of these nutritionists. If you're going to partake, just partake responsibly and try to get the Alaskan stuff. Is there anything else I missed here, Jamie? I mean, I, I can go on and on about fish, and I try, I'm trying to stick to halibut today, but I just find myself catching and going off the tangents, and I mentioned salmon and things. But halibut, really, the, the bottom line is here, halibut's in season, enjoy it, ask for a uh, wild Alaskan caught halibut, and um, just enjoy it. Um, I am the healthy chef dude. I'm a chef on a mission to bring better food to us, to restaurants, to educate people. Hit me up with some emails. Follow me on Twitter, Healthy Chef Dude. Uh, yeah, at Healthy Chef Dude on Twitter or on my website. Talk to you guys later. Thanks.